right, welcome back. Here we go. We have, uh, gosh, just an amazing opportunity to hang out with a guy that I just love dearly. Um, he is one of the most passionate mortgage professionals I've ever met in my life. He is a guy that believes and trusts in high trust. And uh, if I had to create a short list of people on the planet that really, really understand the high trust interview, this guy would be at the top of the list. His name is Cody Hardridge, and he is joining us today for Sales Mastery Unfiltered. And we are going to talk about the art and science of influence. Cody, Good to have you here, my friend. I'm always, always grateful to be a part of this, Todd, and the high trust community. So thank you for having me. No, it's uh, it's so easy and it's so joyful to know that we get to talk about probably the one thing that most people in this business just don't understand. And everybody understands trust. Hopefully everybody understands high trust. But I think everybody gets a little bit tripped up on how do you how do you weave it? How do you make it happen? And uh I think it's one of the things I recall about our journey together um, was when I got a, a kind of a, a testimonial text from you. And the part that I really, really honed in on was your comment that, um, and I feel really appreciative of getting this from you, but it said, you have changed my family's life for generations. Correct. And I will never forget those words because it reminds me every day about how important this high trust concept is. And it, um, you call it the holy grail mm -hmm. of influence. I do. Yeah. And I, I just love that. So why don't you, what makes it so powerful? First of all, what is it? What makes it so powerful? And how does it, how does it translate into boosting like trust mm -hmm. and I guess ultimately conversion? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Todd, I believe um, at my core that, you know, the high trust interview really gets to the essence of what selling really is. And I believe selling to be the process of discovering the deepest needs and values of our customers and then delivering that in a world-class fashion. Mm. And I also believe that the gateway to success in the mortgage business is through the high trust interview. Yeah. Um, and we could talk about a number of different reasons on why it impacts people. Um, so maybe I'll just give you a few. Yeah, sure. So the first thing is, is that the conversation itself is a pattern interrupt. The entire conversation, okay? When you think through this, every loan officer in the business shows up with a box of donuts talking about FHA loans, conventional, and VA. I can do all of those. It's right. amazing, right? Um, and so when one of your students shows up and begins to execute a high trust interview, the realtor never knows what even hit them. Okay. <laughs> They're not prepared for it. They're thinking that it's going to be the standard sort of conversation. And I can see the look on their face when I hit them with the first question. You know, when I ask them a serious question and they look at me for a second and realize that I just asked them a serious question that they're going to have to respond, it just changes the entire game. You know, the other piece of it is, is that um, they don't know that it's a sales conversation. Right. They have no idea what's going on. So it allows me to sit down with someone that I want to do business with and be in 100% total and complete control of the conversation all the way from hello to yes. Boom. Hello to yes. So I think it's important to understand that, um, that, that, that as the viewer today and, and anybody that listens we're not doing something to someone. It's not a, it's not a, it's not some sales technique. No. What it is, is a deeply held desire. And this is, I think, where people need to get to. It's like, it's like, if I really, really wanted to get to know you, mm -hmm. then I need to ask questions that allow me to get to know you. And the deeper the questions are, the deeper I get to know you. Yes. And I think that's what, <clears throat> for me anyway, interesting off right out of the cuffs is that's the first part of the change is if I don't know you and you don't know me in a deep enough way, we don't have any assuredness that this is going to work. No. We don't, we don't know anything. It's like, you can't, you can't, I guess you could go out on one date and say, you're pretty. I love you. Can we get married? but we don't know that even that's gonna work, right? You're, and you're, so yeah, you're bringing up a really good point here, Todd, okay? <laughs> um, are we compatible? 
Part of my high trust interview, I quote a good friend of mine. He is a New York Times bestselling author named Todd Duncan. <laughs> and he told me once that if there is no essence between people in business, then no amount of money is going to bring them together. Yeah. Yeah. But if there's essence, then no amount of money is going to keep them apart. Yep. Right? I quote that on every high trust interview that I do, mm. and I use it in my transition um, because I want them to understand that this is not about me interviewing for a job for them. Mm. Okay? It's about for us to discover if we have essence between each other. Are we a good fit for each other? Not just me for you, but you for me. So essence is the same as chemistry. Correct. There's an attraction there. We believe in the same things. Like-minded thinking. Yeah. And so, so tell, kind of, I guess, I think right now everybody's maybe trying to get back to, you know, we, we had this great run and, you know, for the right practitioners mm -hmm. are having an even better year this Correct. year. Um, but a lot of people are, are watching the business dip mm -hmm. and, and I've learned two things. I've learned one that, that a lot of people don't, a lot of people are getting business from people they think they have relationship with or they think they have partnership with. And they really don't. When they, when they start to hear what you and I are about to unplu un unplug, they really don't. They Correct. really don't have what we're talking about here. And, and so to, to, to look at, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 business resources, you know, I, I need to do something to, to re-engage and to, and to deepen. And then for the rest that maybe don't have that population, it's like I've got I've to start adding some people and I want to be selective about it. But at the very essence of the high trust interview, it, in my mind, it has to become a way of life mm -hmm. versus some like skill set. Correct. So talk about just, just quote. I think I think what brings it alive is when you said people aren't ready for it and they don't know it's happening. It's because of the questions that are asked. So I need you to go off on like the importance of unique and deep yeah. and real questions. Yeah. So any time that I sit down with a potential referral partner, I have a goal to discover their deep inner fire of what is driving them. Deep inner fire of what drives them. Correct. And then I'm going to warm my hands on that fire once I've discovered it. Right? But the only way to discover that is to ask important questions that matter about things that matter to them, okay? Um, one of the questions has to do with their goals for their business, okay? And this is simple, if someone has no goals, they're probably not a good fit for me, okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know that. If they don't want to become a better version of themselves, um, then we're not gonna align in our thinking. Um, so I'll ask about their goals, and then I'll ask permission to ask a, a very important and personal question. So what? let's just do this right now. Yeah, you wanna role play? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> So, Todd, you've got a fantastic business. You've got a fantastic reputation. You know, uh, we're coming out of 2020, a record year for a lot of us. Um, what are your goals for yourself and for your team moving forward? Yeah, I think for me, I want to continue to, to watch us pivot in the new whatever that you call this. Yeah. Um, I, want to, I want to see the team really, really resonate around how do we take what we do in the old way and continue to dominate and fashion it in the new way without losing connection. I really want to I want to watch us transform digitally. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to watch us impact more people because we can digitally. And um, and I think for the team, they wake up every day and they get jacked up and excited that this whole thing we've gone through is allowing us now to reach more people more quickly and um, and make more impact. Yeah, uh, more permanently. It's powerful. So I've heard you say a couple of words in the last few minutes that are really important to me. Do you mind if I ask you a kind of a deep personal question? I know we don't know each other very well. Yeah, no, go. Do you mind? No. Nope. What, <clears throat> what is it that's important about being successful to you? Um, I, I, love, I love setting goals and achieving them. Okay. That to me is where success starts. I, I, don't, I don't wait for success to happen. I, I kind of go after it. So I, I like setting goals and making them happen. But what's behind that? Like, what do you get from that? I guess I get a couple things. I, I, I get um, a, a pretty deep sense of fulfillment. Okay. So when, when goals are set and goals are achieved, um, I feel fulfilled. I feel accomplished. Um, I feel blessed. 
I think that when goals are accomplished, it also gives the whole team a, a new bar, uh, kind of a new foundation to where do we go from here. Um, at the end of the day, that's probably, probably some of the things, fulfillment and feeling accomplished and blessed. And why is that important, that feeling of accomplishment? Why do you want to feel fulfilled? I guess, I guess it brings me, um, it, it, making a difference brings me a deep sense of gratitude. That, wow. that is, to me, when making a difference. Making a difference happens with all those things, and when that happens, I have a deep, deep sense of gratitude. Wow. Yeah. I'm getting some cold chills, sorry. <laughs> so let me just share a little bit about, about me on this. Um, you know, when I kind of first started this journey, you know, I thought it was about those things. I thought it was about, you know, closing more loans, making more money, having more lifestyle, all of those things. And the deeper I go into this thing and the more I research and discover and, and talk to other people who have been there, I realize that what's really behind all of that is significance, having significance in the lives of people who matter the most to me, having a positive impact on their lives. And so um, I just, I get cold chills to hear you talking about those things. I appreciate you sharing those things with yeah. me. Yeah. So like I said in the letter that I sent, we are very interested in starting a business relationship with you. But I'm going to be honest with you. We don't start working with anyone until we've had the opportunity to sit down like this. And for me to find out about you, what matters most, how you do business. So with that being said, when you're considering a lender to refer your clients to, what's the most important thing to you? Um, I would guess that the most important thing for me about that referral to a lender would, would be having a deep sense of confidence that those buyers are going to be taken care of in a way that really, really personalizes the mortgage experience, delivering like an off the grid customer experience um, and being, for me, hearing from them that they're delighted because of that referral. Yeah. I've never heard that answer. So good <laughs> job on that. Um, that's fantastic. Um, why is that important to you though? I, um, I, I decided a long time ago that I could spend my life prospecting or I could spend my life taking care of people that already trust me. And when I can refer a buyer that way that has a beautiful experience with a lender because I trust the lender, then I know that buyer is going to be a mouthpiece for me in the marketplace. I don't have to spend a lot of time marketing. I don't have to buy leads. You know, if, if a lender blows a buyer's mind um, and I'm in, I'm in the middle of that referral, that buyer is gonna, that buyer is gonna get, bring me more and more business than I could ever dream of. And so the lender experience to me is really, really important because that's the outcome I'm looking for. Wow. So, yeah. So do you see transactions happen in the marketplace that don't go that way? All the time. That go badly and reflect poorly I on you? I see promises made that aren't kept. I see people um, hiding behind challenges and not telling me what's going on. I see people, um, you know, like sometimes it takes hours to get a return yeah. phone call. I mean, I don't expect a, a return phone call in two or three minutes, but I expect one in an hour or two, you know, and I just don't, you know, like just follow up with me. Just let me know what's going on. Yeah. And I see it all the time. I, I get really, really agitated when, you know, lenders have a problem and they don't vocalize it. They try to fix it for three or four days and then they can't fix it. Mm -hmm. And we're three or four days down the track. And so this communication and just honesty. I mean, if it's, if there's some, if there's a problem, tell me, Yeah. you know, but yeah, I see it all the time. When promises happens. made, promises not kept. Yeah. When that happens, how does that impact you as a professional? The opposite of what I just said. Yeah. It's like, like if, if I refer that buyer to a lender and that lender makes a commitment and doesn't honor that commitment, it reflects badly on me. Yeah. And, and I can't afford to have that happen. I can't afford any lender that I refer a buyer to to do anything less than exceptional service. Short of the buyer lying, 
That's my expectation. Wow. I'm not gonna work with anybody that cannot prove to me that that experience is, is as high to five stars as possible. Wow. Those are some high standards. That uh, sounds like you have them too. I, I, that's uh, why you are who you are in the marketplace. <laughs> I guarantee you that. Yeah, so, yeah. so from here, I would just go to the next thing. So let's talk about the next thing that's important. Sure. And you know, for me, I'm always trying to get um, one to three things yeah. that matter most for mm -hmm. them um, before I ever do any selling right. of any kind. Right. Um, one of the one of the important lessons that I learned when I was learning how to do this was that. Um, so we're not role playing anymore. No, we're done. Okay, so just for a second, I want I want you guys to know, we had no idea when we sat down 18 minutes ago that we were going to do what we just did. No. And I decided that I would put Cody on the spot because he has flown to my home in Las Vegas to talk about mastering the high trust interview. And I need to put somebody in front of you that has mastered the high trust interview. So if I put him on the spot, we can roll. And I got to tell you right now, I didn't know the questions he was going to ask. And I had to think just like every realtor thinks, every financial planner thinks, I had to think about my answers. And what I gave him to the best of my ability were the answers that struck me, the answers that I was being triggered to share. That to me was one of the most exceptional, raw, unfiltered, let's just do this. Because mm -hmm. I interrupted you, yep. I said, let's just do this. Powerful. So now I think anybody can see that that was like a 10 minute discussion That's and it. it doesn't happen to 90% of the conversations. Correct. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah. I think one of the big misconceptions that loan officers have about the high trust interview is exactly what you said earlier, that it's, it's just some skill, you know, or maybe it makes them feel salesy, but that's really not what it's about. Right. It's about adding value to the lives of other people. And you can't add value to someone unless you know what value matters most to them. Right? We have to ask those questions to be able to understand what that is. Um, success in itself is, is nothing more than adding value in the lives of, of other people, right? Um, we've all heard about the stratospheric law of value and of compensation. You know, that um, our value is going to be based on the level of value that we give beyond what we accept to be compensated for. And then the law of compensation is going to be based on the number of people that we add value to, right? right? So it really is about helping people. And when I'm sitting down with a real estate agent or a home builder or a financial planner, it's not about me. It really is about them. And I'm trying to look for opportunities to help them to achieve their own goals. Right. right? We've all heard that if you know, we want success, help other people be successful. Help enough people get what they want, you're going to get everything that you want. You know, and so I, with my partners, I am very sincere in discovering what it is that matters most and what they want to accomplish in their life and their careers. And then I set off looking for ways to make that happen or to help them or to come alongside them or add fuel to that inner fire, whatever that is. But I want to add value to their lives in a way where they will feel impact from it. Yep. Right. And they'll feel the significance that I'm trying to bring to the relationship. So let me throw a, a, another question at you, because that 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 feels exactly like the interview should feel. It's, it's like that, that kind of commonality and that kind of, but let's say you're doing this and the answer to the question is, you know, I, um, well, I define success by how many leads my lender brings me. That's interesting, you know, because here's the deal, Tom, or Todd, is that what they're getting at is reciprocity. Yeah. Okay, reciprocity is an objection. Okay, it's an objection. It's the same as I already have a lender. It's the same as I've been working with the same people for 20 years and I'm happy. It's yeah. an objection. Okay, so when someone comes at me with reciprocity, I'm gonna hit them with lost leads. Okay, it's like you pull a knife, I'm gonna pull a gun. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. All right. So hit so, lost leads because this is huge. Yeah, it really is. And, and we can go through this. I, I, I actually need a calculator to do it, but we can rough it. You know, is so, your phone on? Um, I think I've got it sitting over here, but that's okay. Let's, let's Bring just, me a let, phone. We'll, we'll use round numbers to make it easy. Okay. Okay. So, so Todd, I, that's really interesting. Um, you define success by the number of leads that, uh, your lenders give to you. Um, so let me ask you some questions. Okay. Tell me what is your buy side goal for this year? Um, probably a hundred. Okay. hundred buy sides. Yep. How many people? do you typically need to talk to 
to close a single transaction? I'm at probably 20%, so 500. Okay. Um, 500 people to close 100. Yeah. Okay. So, and your average transaction here is about 300,000 or so? Yeah, 300. Good. Yeah. 300. Okay. Um, so, you have to talk to 500 to close 100. That means that there's 400 people that aren't going to buy from you. Do you think that any of those people end up buying from another realtor and another <laughs> lender? Uh, I'm sure that probably happens. Okay. So what I would like to do, okay, is talk to you about a system that I've implemented with my existing partners that would help you to convert an additional 5 to 10% of those 400 people. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. do some quick math here, okay? Um, 40 transactions, right, um, times $9,000 in commission, right, is $360,000, I'm pausing for a second. I hope that math's right. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. <laughs> um, so we well, can check it real quick. It's unfiltered. I want to make sure it's not like so it's three million six hundred thousand. Forty times three hundred thousand average loan amount, and times what? Nine thousand. No, two point five percent or uh, my side. What we said four hundred four hundred. It's basically forty times nine thousand. Yeah, forty times nine thousand. Three hundred sixty grand to your bottom line. So. That's 40 additional transactions. I'm not talking about leads. I'm talking about funded deals, funded transactions. And how does that happen? How do, I mean, I get the 400, you know, we follow up with them. I don't know what the, the, the that, that mm -hmm. kind of top of funnel thing ends up being, but so how does that happen? That's a good question. So what you need to understand is that we are the best of the best at buyer conversion. Interesting. Okay? I take more mortgage loan applications than any other loan officer in the state. Okay, and I convert more. Okay, more leads to applications to fundings than anyone else. Right? We're very good at what we do. We're highly scripted. We understand the buyer psychology. We know exactly what they want. We know exactly what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Okay? We also know that there's a certain population of prospective buyers that aren't going to talk to you. Okay? They're not going to want to hear what you have to say, but they're going to be very interested in talking to me, okay? mm -hmm. which puts me in a powerful position to gain their trust, and to cross-sell them on why you're such an amazing agent to work with. Does wow. that make sense? Yep. Okay. In addition to that, because of my team, because of the way that I'm set up, okay, I have a machine, right, that is always working, right? And we're going to be able to follow up with your people. We're going to be able to follow through, cross-sell you, just like a division of your business, and be able to help you convert more buyers in less time with less stress. Now, totally up to you. <laughs> I'm happy to give you $24,000 for Zillow. <laughs> I'd rather help you get the $360,000, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, um, I don't even know where to go from here. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like, it was like the, totally, I mean, you landed, and we didn't have a plan. I had two questions to ask you, and... Neither one of them has anything to do with what we just did, but what we just did is the secret sauce. That is it. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. And this is important, Todd. If I can exceed your expectations on these things that we've talked about today, do you see any reason that you and I couldn't start a business relationship together? No. Outstanding. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to working with you. What's next? What's next is I want to set up a time so that you and I can sit down and talk about how you want to be referred and how best to refer me, okay. right, to increase conversion, right? I want to sit down and talk about how we can marry our scripting, okay, so that we can get more conversions together. When? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so this, this is such a special moment, right, right here, right now, because... Um, I think what's interesting about this, and I'll say it to you guys, is uh, when we were going through this, I felt the emotion. Bingo. I mean, I literally felt the my inside emotion to the, and I teach this, and you just role played it with me, and there's no way that I could say anything mm -hmm. that was like not true. So I know that you, and one of the greatest joys of my life, Cody, is when I watch guys and gals own it mm -hmm. at the level of mastery mm -hmm. 
and then teach it to others. What are the two or three hurdles in your experience as you start to coach other LOs mm -hmm. in your company and whatnot? What are, the, what are the hurdles that maybe somebody watching us today could hear from you and, and maybe how to get through that? What are the, where do people stub their toe? Where do people kind of, yeah. what, what are the things that come to mind? And just speak to the camera. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of things on this. The first thing is, is make a commitment to mastery, okay? Um, we don't wanna treat this just as a skill, but it is a skill that can be acquired and developed and improved on. And if you can learn this conversation, then you're gonna have a strategic competitive advantage over the other loan officers in the marketplace, okay? You're gonna have a strategic competitive advantage um, over the person that's sitting across from you, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, right? They're gonna be totally yeah. unarmed and you're gonna be armed in this deal. Um, I remember when I learned this, I practiced it over and over and over again. And I've used the analogy of um, Academy Award winning actors before yeah. and the amount of time that they spend practicing for that award winning scene, right. right? And as loan originators, oftentimes we make a lot more money than actors or doctors right. or lawyers or anyone else. So it's like, how much time have you spent practicing the one skill that can change the trajectory of your career and your life. Forever. And that's what we're talking about here. So I have coached people, I have mentored people who know how to do this. However, there are elements of it that are missing, okay? And so get a partner, get someone to practice this with, role play just like yeah. you and I were, and someone that'll be honest with you about your delivery, um, give you feedback and work on this until you reach that level of mastery, mm. right? Until you can sit down and intuitively know how to handle any situation that a referral partner is going to throw at you, right? Um, situations that would baffle the common salesperson right. is right. intuitive to you, if that makes sense. So yeah. just continue to practice and hone your skills um, until it comes to you intuitively. Well, and, and not only intuitively, but then it, it and, and maybe it's the same word, but it becomes natural. Correct. And what you just did was natural. Correct. <clears throat> and I think I, I, you know, everybody has to get to the point where they, you know, that truth that we talk about in the academy that, you know, that y if you don't practice more than you play, when you play, you will look like you haven't practiced. Correct. And you were game ready for that because we did not know we were going to go there. Correct. It was totally spontaneous. And so everybody watching this, they're going to be game ready because you will have set an appointment mm -hmm. to have this conversation. And Correct. so that's part of the practice thing. Um, I have one more question as we wrap it up, and um, and I'm thinking that I'm thinking like you have different social styles, right? You have drivers, and you have mm -hmm. expressives, and amiables, and you know fast thinkers and slow thinkers, and you could, if you really master this, you could do it in ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and Yet, if you go deeper on some of the answers, it could go out. What's the range, would you say? Because it's probably different all the time, This right? is a great question. But I remember something you said. Yes. You said this, I think, three years ago in Elite. You said, I really want, you know, I get paid to influence. Those were your words. I get paid to influence. Um, I get paid to add enough value to influence people to yes. And I think you said, I'd like to be able to do that in 15 minutes. If you ask the right questions, it may not take longer than that, right? I agree. If you ask the right questions, it won't. However, what can happen is, is if you are sitting across from a perfect match, yeah. Oh, yeah. then time goes away. Yeah. And I've experienced this before. Okay, My uh, number one partner is a gentleman that I met eight or nine years ago. Um, he was, you know... Uh, just an individual agent, scratching, trying to make his, his business work. Um, we sat down for what is typically a one-hour meeting and were kicked out of the place we were after three and a half hours. Jeez. <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't even realize that the time had passed because we were such a good match for wow. each other. When we asked the question, like we were both, it was just cold chills and everything else. He's one of my most loyal partners. Now he's the number one agent in my metro area wow. and has one of the most powerful teams there and one of the most influential teams. And so we've been able to actually grow together. So uh. um, <clears throat> can I do it in 15 minutes? That's great. But I would almost rather um, 
sit down with someone that's a model match and get into a flow state with them, you know, and we go tell everybody 30 to 45 minutes, yeah. you know, and you can really add a lot of meat to the bones when you're connecting and asking yeah. great questions. And now, I didn't ask the question because I want to tell everybody to do it fast. Right. But I want to ask the question because I think at the end of the day, this is a new, this is a new skill for most people to, to add meat to the bones, to really understand what people need and to go deep and deep and deep and deep and to feel that, to feel the goosebumps, feel the connection, mm -hmm. because then you know, you know something magical is happening. That is exactly and right. That's, and that's why those relationships then end up lasting so long and why loyalty is so high. Right. Yeah. And then the, the, the next piece of that, you know, is the presentation phase of it. You know, once we've asked those questions, yeah. forming a presentation. The, by the way, the answers to the questions are pretty similar. Yep. You're going to hear yep. a lot of the same things yep. if you interview a lot of real estate agents yep. and home builders like I have. Um, and so you can be prepared, right? right. And, and um, prepare solutions, not just solutions, but compelling solutions to their deepest needs right. and values. Yep. And when you can do that and at the same time answer what you do, how you do it, and why you do it, when you get through the why you do it, that's when you're going to start hitting the cold chills with them. That's when you're going to start getting the emotional connection. That's when they're going to feel inspired. Yeah. That's when the influence happens. Yeah. Is whenever you are able to solve for those things that matter most for them. Which is the whole goal in our business is you need to be in the solution business. You need to be a solutionist. You need to, and people will tell you where they have pain mm -hmm. and they'll tell you how they'd like you to solve it. And all you have to do is Solve it. That's Go it. figure out how to solve it. And Go it's execute a, it's at a high a, level. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 Wonderful 35 minutes, my friend. It was so exciting to have past. you <laughs> here and to do raw and real. Um, the Hydra Sales Academy changed your life. Oh, yeah. Tell everybody in 60 seconds why they ought to consider the December program that we're doing in Dallas, Texas. Oh, absolutely. Number one, I'm going to be there. That's the first <laughs> thing. Okay. You're close enough to my hometown that I can actually drive this time. Um, no, seriously, though, you know, we're talking about how to do the high trust interview. The only place that you can go and really learn this skill and be around other like minded people that are um, well versed and can help you through it is really at High Trust Sales Academy. Yeah. Like if you want to make a difference, go to that. Yeah. We send every single loan officer that we have to it. I go. And the interesting thing is, even after 20 years in the business, I've never gone to sales academy and not walked away with a major insight. I don't care who you are. We all go through different seasons in right, our businesses, right. right? And you may go the first time and something be impactful for you and go three or four years later and your business is in a different spot, you're do. in a different you season. Hear something new, yeah. And be totally blown away by something yeah. else. And that's been my personal experience. Yeah. So um, if you want to acquire these skills and be taught at a professional level how to do these things, then High Trust Sales Academy is the only place to do it. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Wonderful, wonderful time together with Mr. Cody Hardridge, dear friend and an awesome, awesome mastery practitioner of this skill. Uh, it's been a joy.